Hey guys, today we are going to start looking at some of the different uses of music tech. To be a musician today, you really have to have a grasp of at least some form of music technology. We use it in composing, we use it in performing, we use it in rehearsals. So we're going to start with a little operating system that I found called Ableton. Now Ableton have lots of different forms of music software, but the one we're going to be looking at is a teaching software that they have called Learning Music. So you need to visit the website www.learningmusic.ableton.com. I will pop the link in the description below here and you need to get yourself onto that website and find that first section of teaching. Today we're going to be looking at the beats which is 10 pages of lesson and it is really fun to get through so you'll have a chance to have a real good play around on that today. When you get to that website, you'll be greeted with a page that looks like this. And it's just getting started making music. And the first section of lessons, like I said, is the Make Beats lesson. And there's 10 pages for you to click through. Make sure you're reading through the information. Make sure you get a real good go at playing around with all those different beats because you will be using this software later on down the line. So I'm going to give you a pause point here. So you're just going to press pause on my video and then head over to that website, have a real good play around on it. And as soon as you've got through that lesson that's on that website, you're going to come back to me. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed that. So let's see what you've learned. The first thing I want to look at is the different sections of the drum kit. So who can tell me what this is. Which part of the drum kit are we looking at here? Shout it out. That is the bass drum or kick drum, more commonly in the UK called the bass drum, more commonly in the US called the kick drum, but either is perfectly acceptable. Here's a few features of the bass drum. It stands on the floor. It's the only part of the drum kit that actually makes contact with the floor. And it has a pedal, which is operated by the drummer's right foot. And when the drummer hits down that pedal, a soft beater strikes against the plastic skin. And that creates that thudding sound, that doof sound that you've all been hearing as you've been going through your lesson on Ableton. OK, next one. Which instrument are we looking at here? It's another part of the standard drum kit. That's right, it's the snare drum. So a few features of the snare drum. This one is mounted on a stand, a metal stand, which lifts it up off the floor. It's played with drumsticks. And when you hit the skin on the top, it vibrates the snares, the, the springs that are underneath. And they vibrate against the drum head and create that cracking sound that is so distinctive. All right, next bit of the drum kit. What are we looking at here? If you said hi-hat, very good. Give yourself a tick. Let's have a look at some features of the hi-hat. There's two symbols on a hi-hat which are mounted on a metal stand. They're operated with a spring system. As standard, they are set to open, but the symbols will close when the pedal is pushed down by the player and the drummer plays that, that pedal usually with their left foot. You can then strike those cymbals with your drumsticks and a different sound is created if the cymbals are open or if they're closed and you've been having a little play around with that on Ableton. Fabulous. So which of these is an electric kit and which is an acoustic kit? See if you can spot the difference by looking at it. Three, two, one. There you go. Well done if you got that right. So the acoustic kit is bigger and the drums have lots of hollow space inside them to create that real booming sound. The electric kit can be made much smaller, much more compact and it is plugged in to create the sound. And that is the big difference between electric and acoustic. Electric instruments need to be plugged in. It really is as simple as that. So there are pros and cons to using electric versus acoustic instruments. So we're just going to have a quick look through. Before I put my list up, I just want you to have a moment here to think. What do you think the pros and cons of using an electric or an acoustic drum kit are? 
just shout them out at the screen. I can't hear you. All right, let's have a little look. So both the electric and the acoustic instruments, and this isn't just drums, this is all kinds of instruments, require a similar skill level. You need to be competent on your instrument to get a good sound out of it. That's just the way it is. So electric or acoustic, you will need to have some skill on your instrument to be able to get a good sound out of it. Electric instruments can be made smaller and more portable, like we saw with the drums, which need a lot of space to create the vibrations that create that music. It's the same with, for an example, an electric guitar which doesn't need to have that hollow body that an acoustic guitar has to create the sound. And you could go on and on like that about many, many instruments. You can make them much smaller, much easier to carry around with you. Electric instruments can also channel different sounds. You can program them to make a different sound. So I don't know if you've ever heard of something called a drum pad. A drum pad's a great little piece of software, you, or hardware. You hit the pad and it will create a drum sound or it will create a sound effect or it will play a recording you could have done a vocal recording when you hit that pad it will play it back to you so electric instruments can channel all different sounds electric instruments can be played either loudly through an amp or they can be played really quietly through headphones and you've got so much control between the volume when you're playing an electric instrument that you don't have on an acoustic instrument so on the other hand, acoustic instruments don't require a wired setup, so you don't need to carry around a PA system with you if you're going to be playing for your acoustic instrument, you just need the instrument itself. And acoustic instruments are more responsive to different styles of playing. So quite often when you talk to professional musicians, they will tell you that they prefer to play on their acoustic instruments because they can get them to make the sounds that they want them to play. So now that we've had a little think about those pros and cons, I'm going to give you a few scenarios and I want you to decide, would you choose an electric setup or an acoustic setup for these different scenarios that I'm about to give you? So grab a pen and paper and I want you to jot down your ideas as we go. So here's the first one. A small gig in a community hall or in a back garden. OK, so we're looking at maybe between 20 and 60 people coming to listen to some music in a small space. Have a little think. Would you use an electric setup or an acoustic setup? Here's your second question. A large gig in a stage in more theatre. OK, so this time we're looking at a big sold out theatre. Think about Glastonbury. Think about those big stadium gigs that you see. Would you choose an electric setup or an acoustic setup? Your third scenario, if you were just practicing your instrument at home or at school, what would be better to practice on, an electric instrument or an acoustic instrument? Have a little think. And number four, if you were going to record a new composition, you've got some new ideas, you want to get them recorded and start creating a new piece of music, would you choose to do that using electric instruments or acoustic instruments? Now, there's not necessarily right or wrong answers to all of these. There's pros and cons. So I want you to have a real good think and write down your thoughts for each of those four scenarios. And I'm going to give you another pause point here to stop the video and come back once you've got your ideas on paper. OK, fabulous. Well done. So let's have a little look at some of the ideas that I had when I was going through these different scenarios then. Like I say, not necessarily right and wrong answers. And these are just my thoughts. You might have had some different ideas. So a small gig in a community hall or in a back garden. The advantages of an acoustic setup here. Very little setup required. You don't need to get that PA system out. It doesn't matter if you haven't got electricity wired into your garden. You don't need that if you've got acoustic instruments. You can just get your instruments out and start making some music. You get that nice natural sound quality. You get that sound that is quite intimate and that's quite nice to have in a small setup like that. And also, you know that the volume isn't going to be too loud because you haven't got it going through an amp. So you shouldn't disturb your neighbours too much. So those are the acoustic advantages. Let's have a look at some advantages if we had an electric setup in this situation. 
The only one I could really think of here was it would be easy to adjust the volume. So if your neighbours did come hammering at the door, you can just turn down your sound system. Um, I don't know if you thought of some other advantages. If you did, please pop them in the comments below because I'd love to see your thoughts. Let's have a look at the next one. A large gig in a stadium or a theatre. Now, acoustic advantages, I have to say, I was drawing a blank. I came up with nothing. I don't know why you would look at using an acoustic setup here because the fact is the people in the back just aren't going to hear you. So let's have a look at why we would look at using an electric system here. So the sound is easily amplified and you can put that through a big sound system so that everybody in that entire arena can hear the sound that's being created. The other big advantage of an electric setup when you're looking at a theatre or a stadium is that you can create what we call a mix. A mix is basically just adjusting the levels and the sound quality for each individual instrument that's being played. So for example, if I wanted the singer to be much louder than the guitarist, then I could just turn them up in the mix and it wouldn't be a case of telling the singer that they had to shout louder. So you can just create the mix and get all those levels that you want and a good sound technician will be able to create something really special with that ability. So our next little scenario, practicing on your own at home or at school. Now I think there's pros and cons in both columns on this one. So the acoustic advantages that I came up with here, you get a natural sound and I think that's important when especially when you're learning an instrument to really get to know the sound that that instrument makes and you can experiment with the styles of playing on your instrument. And there are lots of different styles on any instrument like for example if you were to play a flute, you could play jazz flute or you could play classical flute. There's even people who do what we call now flute boxing, which is a combination of beatboxing and playing the flute at the same time. And you'd struggle to do all of those different things if you had an electric instrument rather than an acoustic one. Of course, electric instruments have their advantage too. And the big advantage here is that you can play into headphones. So if you're playing at home, and your parents are trying to watch TV or get on with their work, then you've got it playing to your headphones rather than disturbing them. Also at school, if you've got people playing in all the different rooms around in the music department, then you can keep the disturbance to a minimum by playing an electric instrument that plays into your headphones. So I think advantages in both columns there. Um, so take your pick really. Let's have a look at the last little scenario. Recording a new composition. So, acoustic advantages. As we've said before, there's a natural sound quality and that can be important. It depends on what the composition you're recording is, but you might decide that you really want that acoustic sound quality, that natural quality that makes it sound really authentic. However, there are some definite advantages to using electric instruments here. So. It's easy to edit. If you've recorded something electronically, you can um, change the sound, you can change the volume, you can change the quality of the sound very easily. Um, you can use different sounds. So if you've recorded, um, for example, a drum kit and you aren't happy with the sounds that you're using, you can then go into your music tech to change the sound that you've got. And that all comes down to this last point that I've made here, which is the MIDI input. A MIDI input just means that instead of recording sound waves, you're recording the electrical waves instead. So when you hit the drum, it's not actually recording the sound that it's making, it's recording the electrical input, which means that you can then edit that very easily to make it sound like something completely different. You can lengthen the sound or shorten the sound. You can speed it up and slow it down without warping the sound. And that is a huge advantage. So when it comes to recording a new composition, whilst it is lovely to have an acoustic instrument and that might be exactly what you need, for the most part now we would always record new music using electric instruments. Alright, well I hope you've had some fun today playing around with that bit of 
technology on Ableton and I hope you have had some things to think about with electric and acoustic instruments. We will be coming back to all of this very soon so make sure that you are storing all of this knowledge away and now that you've had a go on Ableton I suggest you keep playing around with that and have a look at some of the lessons that go on because we will be using all of that information as we continue through these lessons. Great job! You can go off and have a break. Bye now.